Welcome to Anecdotes for Success with Matt and Paul. Storytelling is an art form, emphasizing the value and learning that is created through personal experience. Our purpose is to share these stories and experiences with the listener. Everyone has a powerful testimony. Let's use them to level up to our best life with truth, meaning, trade-offs, and perspective. Big shout out to Isaac Mather for the new podcast intro. You can check Isaac's music out on all socials or directly at IsaacMatherMusic.com. All right, Matt, today was one of those weeks where about five times we rescheduled the podcast with our guests. And at the end of the day, between the three of us, we couldn't make it happen. So it's it's us two. The good it, news it, is the guest will be coming back. But the bad news is we have we're we're getting more popular. The next four weeks we already have guest scheduled. So. I, I, w- I was I was gonna say you just mentioned how many weeks we have booked ahead and and uh, we're laughing about it. Um just like holy cow, how's this how's this happen? Oh well, you know, why are interesting people want to talk to us? Like John last episode, John Dunkel, I've still been thinking about our conversation with him and how interesting that was and how smart of a person he is. Um, you know, but you said something in our text, was it last night or yesterday? I think you said being consistent isn't convenient. Right. And you said, and it's like, what a, what a, what a great, you know, lesson for, for anyone. Right. I mean, cause we both value consistency, right? We think consistency is, uh, a, a way to success, right? It's a tool for success. And I think, most successful people would agree with that, but it's not convenient. It's inconvenient many times, but you know, I had a long week. I had some things you're busy. I've got a long day ahead of me today. So what do we do? We get up, you know, we make sure we make a plan and get up earlier than the normal, at least for me, because I know I have a long day <laughs> and, and, and know what I did last night, Paul, I went to bed early. I went to bed earlier than I I would on on a Friday, genuinely, and and here you know, and and it's just it's just a great lesson, not not just for everyone, but for us. It's like, yeah, this stuff is not nothing's nothing worthwhile is ever easy. So I, I thought it, I that's been ringing in my ears since you texted me that. Yeah, no, this year when we decided to go weekly, consistently, we've had a couple close calls because of travel and, <laughs> and things that come up. And we always try to record Monday or Tuesday for a Sunday publishing because as the week progresses, it's harder and harder to have everybody's times converge, right? Yeah. We missed our we missed our window with the guest on Tuesday. We could have done it late, and then we decided not to. And you had an emergency come up. Of course, I'm coaching and getting ready for school. Anyways, uh, they'll be on again, and well, not again. They'll be on for the first time. Yeah. And it's like I told the guests, we're not going anywhere. So it's not like, oh, you can't be on now because this ends in a month. Like, no, <laughs> we're not going an- anywhere. It's, 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 uh, it just seems to be g- gaining more and more momentum and steam. And, um, the conversations are more and more interesting. And, and, um, you know, I don't, I, I actually had something that I thought, well, I'm going to bring it up unless you got something you, you know, you wanted to, 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 get into first no go i was going to talk more about consistency but i want to hear what you oh, have to oh say oh yeah no we could we could do that too but but one of the things that that i was sitting here thinking after you mentioned consistency they're not really they're not related at all but i was talking to my wife last night about this um we were sitting around talking and uh we were talking we, we have uh, our baby on the way. So we talk about that a lot and, and raising that child. And, and one of the things that came up, I just read this study, Paul, this week and um, it went in, I read it. I was like, wow, that is crazy. And then I, I ne- then I forgot about it. And then it popped in my head yesterday with my wife when we were talking and it's, it's something you'll find interesting too. And I may butcher this a little bit. I hope I don't. I wish we, you know, again, our, our fact checker here. But 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 I'll get the point down right, all right? So there's a study done at Harvard that I was reading about. And what it came up with, it was talking about success, right? What is what is um, the one factor that, that 
is most common in successful people. And it was in like 99% of people. They they determined in the study, and, and, you know, people should, anything we say, they should feel free to go look it up, right? And and make sure right. what we're saying is true. You know, I didn't do the study and neither did you. Um, you know, in fact, at this point in our lives with AI, with with so much that can be done with technology. So, you know, there's a lot of things we should we should double check. But this makes all the sense in the world to me. Uh, I don't think it's very controversial. But what what it is said at the end was. Of these successful people, successful people, the one number one factor in success, and it was head and shoulders above everything else. It wasn't your gender. It wasn't your w- geography. It wasn't how much money you were born with. It wasn't any of those things. It was your frame of reference within your life, meaning how did you talk to yourself? How did you speak to yourself? And that usually came down to, Paul, who did you hang out with? Who were the people you, you were surrounded with? Who is your network in your life? And ultimately what it was getting at is people who can, and you've heard me say this before, Paul, because it was what changed my life. People who believe in their head, truly believe, I'm, I can do it. I'm, 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 uh, well, I'll tell you where this came from. We were where the conversation came from. Have you seen Swamp Kings on Netflix with the University of Florida football? No. Watch it. It's really good. I mean, I, 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 you know, I loved it. It, 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 it it's, it's, it's kind of a good throwback. You know, that was a. Those are some fun football teams. Even though I rooted against them the entire time, I did not right, want them right. to win. But it was interesting to see because it's a documentary and see the behind the scenes kind of things, like anything is. But Tim Tebow, who we were all aware of, uh, or I, I think so, was saying in the documentary how when he was growing up, his parents always would tell him, you are born, you are here to do something special. You, you're born to do great things. And and they were just, he said, I grew up hearing that. And he said, you know what happens when you hear that all the time, over and over again? You believe it. And that hit me about this study I heard and read about from Harvard saying basically the same thing. Once you are with a reference, when you have the reference that you are whatever you are, well, and it goes the other way too, right, Paul? And that's where my wife and I got talking about other people we know and how talented they might be or how great they could be, but they have the other side. I'm not good enough. I'll never, I'll never succeed. You know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not worthy, whatever it might be. And I think that is so unbelievably common. But the people who seem to really succeed in life believe it. They've convinced themselves. Someone else has convinced them. They've convinced. And I think ultimately you have to convince yourself. But you hear it from these other outside groups. You convince yourself, hey, I am worthy. I am it doesn't mean you believe you're better than anyone. I, I they're not the same thing. I don't I, I don't want anybody to confuse that. It just means that hey, I can do great things. I can if if they can accomplish that, whoever they are, you know, for me it was reading books about about successful entrepreneurs and realizing by reading those books that they weren't really any different than I was. Then I got to convince myself, well, I can be a successful entrepreneur. I can, you know, I can do all these things that everyone said they did in the book. None of those things were special. None of those things, you know, were things that that the average person, which I am, the average person couldn't do. And so I convinced myself, well, I can I can work a side job. I can work 70, 80 hours a week. I can reduce my expenses. I can save that money. I can then invest it. I can then reinvest the gains from those investments. Oh, I can do all these things. I just, all these references meant something to me. And I, it changed my mindset of who I could become. And the Tim Tebow thing, the same way he just said, I just believed I was born. I could be, I could be, and it was about hard work and it was about sacrifice. And he talked about all those things. I don't think people just go, oh, I'm born to do great things, and they sit on their couch and wait for great things to happen. They go out and earn them. They go out and, and, and perform, and they go out and take risk and fail and and, and, and learn and, and keep moving forward. But 
I just was when I when I read that and then I saw the Tebow thing, I just started thinking about how that kind of thing impacted my life and how true I think it is. So so <clears throat> relationships and people believing in you. Yeah, I, I I think I think that's a big part of it. Um until you until until you realize it internalize is the right word until you internalize it the hey yeah me too i can do this i can i am i am a i am capable and i can do i'm going and i'm going to do it and it comes from these again these networks and these according to the study that, hey, right. I, you know, this, but this is a thing that's going to impact you more than anything else. And in my mind, Paul, but I know not in some people's minds, unfortunately, but in my mind, what a wonderful thing. Because there's far too many people who are told you can't do it. You're not good enough. Or the world has conspired against you because of, you know whatever factor that's out of your control that's too common today and it's so detrimental to people and the people who are saying that to other people like yeah you're you know no you you know the 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 world is, is conspiring against you in some way because you're this or that you're not doing people any favors you're harming them because according to the study the number one thing that people need to succeed is self-belief and that self-belief can come from you and others like you telling people you can do anything. And um, you can do anything. I don't care who's listening to this. You can do anything. But you've got to believe it. So I was just I, – I've, I've, I've always believed that since for the last 20 years. But I never knew there was a study done on it. And it was overwhelming. This is the number one factor. Not your education, Paul. Not where, not a degree from a certain fancy school. Not rich parents. It's not those. It's this. So, no, it's uh, it's funny. I, I'm obviously you're you're talking my language with all this. Uh, the interesting part is you can have all that, but you need it especially when things aren't going your way. So you know, a lot of people might say, "Oh, good for you." you can do this start your business or make varsity when you're in sixth seventh grade or whatever you sure. know or, or or go to the college of your choice and then what happens when the going gets tough are they still there supporting you or or do they quietly root against you and not support you anymore so what i like to do i always did it with my daughters i do it with students uh when things are going bad i'm like great now what what are you going to do about it right so so you 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 have to keep it you you need that encouragement especially in the bad times right uh someone you you said it at the end like you can't just sit on your couch and say great things are meant for me you have to you have to go out and do it you have to have support and belief in yourself and from other people but then you have to look forward to when something goes wrong because it's going to hopefully bring another opportunity. Does that make sense? What I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Well, Paul, you just said something, you know, Jocko willing. Yeah. I saw that the other day too, where he says good, right? Yeah. Yeah. The good thing. Right. Which I was like, I, he stole that from me. I, I know. Right? No, but I, I saw that the other day too. And, and I was like, cause I'd heard him say that a while or I'd saw it on a, 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 a YouTube video or I don't know something, but it reminded. I was like, "Oh yeah," and and I was like, "I got. I've got to get that in my head, uh, to 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 have that mindset as well." And what you were saying right there, I'm like, that, "That's a, that's the same. It's the same idea, right?" Yeah. So so basis behind what he was saying, he always yeah. tells himself, "Good," right? Like he doesn't want to go work out. Good. Now I'm gonna go work out, or like uh, you don't you, make you don't make the sports team. Good. Good. Like, go work, work hard. Work harder. And right. He, he always he reframes his mindset. I mean, he's done a lot more difficult things than I've done in life. Uh, no question about a thousand it. Thousand percent. But it was so cool that I'm like, wow, I have a mindset like Jocko. I mean, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. What a what a great thing to say, right? But but I think that but it's not hard, right? You and it, it could we'll tie it we we could tie it back into consistency again because 
Right. You believe in yourself. You find relationships and people that believe in you, yeah. especially when when times aren't going well. That's the ups and downs of life. And then you just consistently keep doing it over and over and over yeah. and over again. And yeah. Probably yeah. probably go places you can't even recognize. I, I, with, uh, I would I would almost guarantee it. I would, and, and Paul, one of the things I want to backtrack on that you said, you said you find people who believe in you. But the key to that is you got to earn their belief, right? You've got, you you know, you've got to, uh, you know, nothing drives me crazier than someone who goes, well, you know, uh, no, no one believes in me. No, it's like, did you show up on time? Did you do what you said? Like, you can't not do those things and expect people just in th those things that that belief in you is earned, right? It's earned. And, and it doesn't mean you can't make mistakes. It doesn't mean you can't. Um, um, fail oh those, those things are fine but you got to earn that belief in you you've got to show up you've got to do your part when you do make a mistake or when you do fail you've got to own it you've got to take responsibility for it but you do those things and then you're going to earn that belief in you and it all just kind of snowballs and it all just keeps going forward so yeah uh well we have as of last night this morning potentially a new business partner with us right Mm -hmm. and he's taken steps already that i believe in him but right. it's 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 still got to be we'll see i'll believe it more when i keep seeing it more right but what what he did yesterday i was like wow this this could work you know what paul that's that's so true he's got to continue to perform to build that trust and it goes the other way too we right. we've got to do our part so we build our trust with him and we recognize that as well and and you know one of the things that that when it comes to that creating that belief and that with each other you know uh, one of the things my wife mentioned to me was cuz we were talking about r raising our our daughter our daughter to come here is how much of that starts at home and with parenting and and the leg up you can give your children I, you know i'd have to believe paul with the successful daughters you have um, that you and you and your wife raised that there was a lot of uh, they have a lot of self-belief, I would imagine. I, I I think that comes from being raised in an environment where they probably heard from you guys in some way. It doesn't have to be these words, but we believe in you and and you 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 can succeed. And, you know, when they do fail and I'm, I know your daughters have failed like everyone has, um, they got the kind of support and the kind of uh you know hey you failed it happened let's get better we're here for you kind of thing those things happen i think i think when they happen at home especially when you're young uh it's got to be the the best thing that could happen to a child it's not did you take them to disney world did you fly first class did you you know did they get did they get every toy they wanted that's that's that doesn't create great children. And I mean, great children, I mean, great children will go off like your daughters are just, a, they are a perfect example. Go off and do, you know, they're great. They're great community members. They're, they're, they're successful. They're, they're, they're built to do wonderful things in this world. That's what I mean by great, great children. You know, they don't have to split the atom or, or, or put, put people on the moon to be great children. Right. Um, I hope not. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> but like that starts with with how with how you guys raise them and praise them and 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 build them up i mean am i wrong that 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 was what happened no and there's no rule book there was a lot of trial and error uh, mm -hmm. and you guys have said that to me before yeah tons and tons but you know i remember specifically there were always uh consequences right uh we never we always told them we never negotiate with a whiner so it's when you're ready to come no matter I, they could have been three years old i mean you know there has to be some level but but i watch two-year-olds that have their parents just wrapped around their finger trying get whatever they want here's my phone here's more candy here's just leave me alone anything to not, shut up right because it's not convenient right now and yeah at a very very young age we used to say well we don't negotiate with whiners so as soon as you stop crying we'll listen to what you have to say and maybe there's a compromise in there but there wasn't a compromise in the behavior does that make sense like, yeah now we can talk and 
Uh, yeah, always, always uh, accountability, always consequences for ourselves too. I remember one time we had a, a screaming chart because it got to the point our kids were just screaming all the time. And they got, they earned enough points on the chart to eventually go to the mall to the arcade for all the games, right? <laughs> right. But, but I found out I was the biggest culprit. I was leading the screaming chart. So it helped change my, so like, I'm wondering why they're screaming all the time. Well, I was doing it too. Wow, but but yeah. I'm, the, I'm the parent. You should, you know, listen to me. Well, so they started calling me on. And to this day, I use that when I coach teams, not a screaming chart, but if I'm telling you something, don't be afraid to call me out on it because if I'm not following my rules, how yeah. the hell do I expect you to follow your rules? Right. And, and, but, but with all that belief is earned each way, like, all right, I'll believe in your rules and how you're trying to hold me accountable and how you're trying to make me a better person because you're doing the same too. Sure. Like no one wants a 500 pound fitness instructor, right? Right. Uh, or no one wants entrepreneur lessons from someone that's never owned a business. Like, I need to believe in you. I need to know what you're doing. And sometimes it's earned just because of maybe your resume. But in the form of parenting, it's not, there's no resume. I mean, yeah. And that only goes so far, right? Most environments, yeah. you know, the resume can get you the position, let's say. But it doesn't make you a leader either, right? I mean, you could have the leader job, but people, you know, people see through it if you're not doing if you're not doing the things that you're expecting of them, right? Well, yeah, it's funny. I mean, when I took over the varsity softball position this year, my resume and my kids' resumes are second to none, right? Okay. And I found real quick nobody cares. I I still had to show I know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Uh, when I took over, when I'm varsity golf assistant now. I, the kids finally have realized from a couple of things I've helped them with, well, maybe I should listen to this guy, mm. even though I've played more rounds of golf and more courses in that entire team combined. Right, like, right. But, but that, that doesn't, you know, you can't rest on your laurels, right? Uh, they didn't, people don't care. So the resume is great. I think it helps them believe in you and you get that earned belief quicker, but you still have to show them something. And I mean, I'm ranting, rambling a little bit, but it, all this ties in. I mean, consistent action, belief in yourself, getting belief earned by other people, and really learning to deal with the roller coaster of what's going to happen if you're trying to do anything worthwhile. Yeah, and and the fact of the matter is, I think a bu much of it comes down to we're, as people, we're we're just going to run into issues. We're going to run into. We're going to run into, into problems. And, and, and well, John Dunkel was talking about it our last podcast. He was, you know, we kind of got into to, uh, choices, but but understanding that, look, we're all going to run into problems. And how are we how, how are we going to deal with them? And he's obviously unbelievably qualified to talk about, you know, um, dealing with things. Right. I mean, we've never I've never spoken to anyone in my life more qualified than John to talk right, about. Right you know, mindset and how to deal with things. And, and, but, you know, John, my impression anyway, was John was, was suggesting like, I don't care who you are. You're going to, you're going to run in difficult times in your life. And, and being, you know, resilient was one of the words, you know, he, he talked about his three buckets and one of his buckets was resiliency. Right. And, and that was, that just resonates with me so much because the, the, most of the people, Paul, I, I, I see who are underperforming in life, it's not because they're not capable or smart enough. It's only because they're not resilient enough. And they qu just they'll quit so quickly. You know, oh, I failed at this. Time to quit. Um, I guess I'm not meant for this. You know, and that, that, that mindset or the, hearing those words drive me crazy. Like, how many people are just – naturals at, at at anything i mean very few of us pick up you know the golf club the first time and start you know hitting 300 yard drives dead down the down the center of the fairway you know you talk about um i'm a big fan of comedians and i love listening to comedy and i love listening to podcasts with comedians on there talking about what they go through and you see the best comedians in the world and there's only one i've ever heard comedians talk about who was just like an absolute natural and that was dave chappelle i guess he was just 
the one that ever they all say was just he just just born with it. But the rest of them spent 10 years in the darkest, dankest clubs in New York and L.A. and, and Timbuktu at midnight to get five minutes, you know, uh, on stage and do it for, you know, a decade or more like that's that's resilience. Right. That's commitment. Yeah, and the the best ones they still go back to places like that to put in the reps, put in the reps, stay sharp, stay sharp. You know, you hear those terms like iron sharpens iron. They they hang out with each other. They criticize each other. They 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 they're always trying to get better. And you know, you said something about quitting. Like, I I read all the Freakonomics books, right, with Levitt and Dubner. And, I love those. Yeah, quitting's not a bad thing if you quit quick. And it's not for you and you move on to something else, right? Yeah, yeah, but, sure. but don't whine to me that, oh, it just wasn't meant to be. And no, you weren't meant to do it, I guess, is, is, is how it works. So that's fine if you quit something and move on, right? But don't quit and then blame your environment or your circumstances or other things you can't control. Because if you consistently put in the effort and you want it worse than anything else, you'll get there. But there's no, you know, I talk about it with the process all the time. There's no timeline on the process. Like, right. yeah, you could say, I want to have a million dollars five years from now. And if it's nothing, if there's nothing else you want in the world, you'll probably get there. But if it takes you six years because you didn't quit, that's OK, too. Right. Yeah. And I, I think people forget about stuff like that. I, I've talked to athletes that didn't quite get recruited to where they want to go after high school. So I'm like, we'll take a year off and just work out. You, there's no timeline that says you have to start college when you're 18. Well, no, I don't want to do that. Or what will people think? All right, we'll go to a community college till you get recruited or go here. Like there's still options. You know, e even when you think there's a time frame involved, there isn't if you keep working hard. Yeah, Paul, I think the time frame people put on the timer they put on themselves is often a mistake. You know, if, if we're setting goals, you know, um, uh, we we want, you know, smart goals, let's say, you know, acronym. We we specific. Um, what, what's the M in that? Um, measurable. 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 Thank you. Yeah, it's in the textbook we look at once in a while at school. Right, right, right. But yeah. but they're, they're, I, I, I love them. But, yeah. but, you know, one of the things that we want is measurable and we want time. But it's also, a mis you know, if, if I'm if I'm doing if you're tr the, the tracking it is a time that's important to me. It's not it has to be done unless it's a, it's unless it's a goal that has to be done right. in this time. But I think your point is absolutely right on. It's like, what do you want to accomplish? Well, I want to shoot in golf, you know, under 80. All right. You can do that. But you don't have to say you're going to do it in a year or two years right. or, you know, there, or or you want to make a million dollars or 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 whatever the case is. You don't have to put the timeline on, you know, I, I want to bench press, you know, 300 pounds. You know, the, that's a mis that's a mistake, I think for a lot of people. You do not have to put the timeline on you. And so what happens is you're putting a timeline on you. It's not going quick enough in your mind. And now what you get frustrated and quit versus, like you said, keep going, keep grinding one foot in front of the other. And usually what happens is as you get closer at the end, things start moving a lot quicker anyway, because you've gotten efficient. Um, uh, maybe if it's a relationship thing, you've built relationships. If it's technological, things move a lot faster, general, gen generally there anyway there's a lot of reasons but the timeline can be a mistake and 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 has made a lot of people quit when they shouldn't have well and again i was looking this up because i i wanted to to be a little clear i'm not saying timelines are bad like there's a people should look up tim urban uh his ted talk on being inside the mind of a master procrastinator mm, because okay. he says he says human beings are great procrastinators. I always show this to my students. It's funny. Uh, you can wait till the last minute to write a paper. You can wait till the last minute to take out the garbage or, or w whatever. There's countless things in life you can wait till the last minute. But the most important, biggest things in life, like someday I'm going to lose weight. Someday I'm going to travel to Europe. Someday I'm going to get a better job. If you don't have a timeline on it, you'll never do it. Right. Mm -hmm. but yep. I, I guess when I'm saying there's no timeline, 
that that shouldn't be set in stone. The timeline's got to be there probably to take action, but I think you can adjust it. Yeah, no, I, I, I completely like six agree. Six years or seven years, it wouldn't matter. But but if you say someday, that's not a time. Like the timeline, it can be like a bell that can be loosened and tightened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. well, it's like we'll use a golf example. I want to, let's say you're uh, 95, you know, you shoot a 95 uh, on whatever handicap that would be, what, a 23 handicap, and you want to get down to a 10 handicap, let's say. And, and you say, I want to do it in two years. And in 18 months, you're from a 23 down to a 13 and you want to get to a 10 and you're like, um, or, or after right. two years you're and you're down to a 13, you're like, ah, forget it. I'm, I, I'm not making it. It's like, no, you're you went from a 23 to a 13. Right. You're only three strokes away. Like, forget the two year thing. Keep going. You're almost there. Yeah. Or, you you know, you're saving for a uh, world trip, a, a trip yeah. to Europe, a trip anywhere. And you're putting 10 bucks a week aside because you have a lot of bills and all of a sudden your washer breaks. And for six months, you can't save any money. All right. So it's extended a little but you know, exactly. exactly. That it shouldn't be an excuse either way. Uh, yeah. So help me out here. What now that we've solved all these problems sure. that we have? Well, usually I, I, I write all this stuff down. What should we name this podcast? Well, we've got consistency, Swamp King, social fitness, frame <laughs> of reference, belief in you, belief is earned, criticism. Real quick, you said Swamp Kings again. If yeah. you if you watch it, you talked about working hard, and if you work hard enough, where do you see how hard they work out? I can't even imagine. You, well, I, I I was stunned. I was stunned. It, it, like I said, I was I was never a fan of that. I've never been a fan of Urban Meyer, but I got a ton of respect for him. And I, only because he beat all my teams, not because I had anything against right. him. And I never had, a, uh, I never was a fan of the University of Florida, only because I'm a big Penn State fan, and I always right. like the state teams too. So, so I was, you know, th that was why. But when I, I watched that and I saw how hard those his the teams were working out, I was like, oh, these guys deserved it. You know, you're like, oh boy, they deserve it. So, you'll you'll enjoy it. But um, no, I will. I'll look it up. So. Boy. Uh, how about what, what, what would, I mean, earning relationships, uh, through consistent action, uh, I, I'd, I'd, love to, I'd love to do something on the fact that the most important thing is that, that, that Harvard study, right. That basically says convincing yourself, you're, 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 and I, you're much more succinct. I'm just trying to lay it out there. Right. You know, at the end of the day, what I was trying to, what I got out of that study was your self belief is the number one thing in your ability to succeed. But that self belief starts with other other people believing in you. And I think that that, as my wife put it, you know, the best if, if thing you can do as a parent or or anyone maybe to siblings or your or, or your cousins or your friends is recognize that your belief in them is powerful but they gotta they gotta earn it at the same time as well but got i really think like let's say it's just my nephews but you know I've, I've got young nephews you know me just telling them hey guys you can do anything you want you're you're you can do it. You got you got to work for it, but you can do it. You can do it. You can do it. Not, not you know. Not I'm not saying that it, they don't hear that from their their parents. I'm just saying uh, it's it's amazing what that means to people. It's a right. it's it's more powerful than me handing a million dollars to. If I handed a million dollars to my nephews and said, "Here, you know, go do great things with a million dollars," I bet they'd have some really cool stuff for about six months, and then they'll be broke again, right? Um, yeah, they would they'd be broke uh, because because they don't know how to handle it. But I think that if I gave them the self-belief that you can make a million dollars, you can do anything you want. You can be the best student, the best lawyer, the best teacher, the best anything you want. That's way more important than giving them a million dollars. Um, way more important. So I don't know how to put that into a title, Paul. 
<laughs> no, I, I I summarized it. Let's just put it that way. You're I, I, yeah, you're you're much better at that than than I. I, I have the, I have the Cliff Notes version of all that. So so it's thank good. God. All right, you're going to be excited for our next four weeks worth of guests. So because we waited so late in the week to record this one, I'll see you in two days. I think. Yeah, yeah, a few days, days. Yeah. All right. See you, Matt. All right. Have a great one. You too.